Good morning, folks. We're expecting CME impact later today. We'll go over the coronal hole preconditioning, geophysical updates, and top science news as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly quiet. We've had no more significant flares. All major motions we see are around the limbs. And top left, we see the next coronal hole turning onto the Earth-facing disk. Only eruption was a C-class flare from the departing group cresting out of view. There and in coming on the north, we find considerable plasma filament activity. We'll especially be monitoring those on the left as they rotate in. Of course, what we need to analyze is the solar wind. Plasma speed elevation yesterday and into this morning is the coronal hole stream. It is modest at best, produced only minor geomagnetic unrest last night, and that means when the CME impacts Earth later today, we will not already be in geomagnetic storm conditions. This eliminates the highest end of the forecast and will most likely have low-level geomagnetic storms when it hits later today. Up next is seismicity, where three more magnitude 4s hit La Palma. The watch continues, but also at Hawaii, where the volcano woke back up this week, and yesterday they took a 6.2 earthquake. It struck technically offshore, but in part of the area known to feed up to the volcanoes from below. A few hours after that earthquake struck, on nearly the exact same longitude as 6.5 struck the waters just offshore southern Alaska. No major damage from either event. Off to cosmology next, where we begin with the TNG simulations, but not the fun visuals, the cautionary tales of using those models. Of course, when the model is based on a particle population they don't understand and isn't really there, Cautionary tale is an understatement, and we'll give the same golf clap at twice the volume to this crew coming in to say no, even the latest move you want to make to fix this catastrophic physics problem isn't going to work at the cosmological scale. Excellent paper up next on the stratospheric QBO, the quasi-biennial oscillation. This paper in the top climate journal will hopefully help delineate the difference between the ongoing climate science debates about the lower atmosphere and what's controlling the region above. The natural variability they peg here is largely driven by the sun, and so forgetting the lower atmosphere climate, this is yet another hint at the geomagnetic and solar control of the upper reach, like we've already seen numerous times at the mesosphere and the thermosphere. Sliding topics only slightly to just one of the flood of similar things we're seeing from the military, preparing for cold, cold environments, cold warfare and storage and everything cold. I'm hearing what the politicians say, and then I watch what the military and scientists actually publish and do. Great work by this team. Let's go, Brandon. Last but not least, we're taking another look at coronal rain and the condensation of material into what essentially are clouds on the sun. Folks, the exact same phenomena of coronal clouding leading to energy blockage and eventually solar micronova, well, this is another way the galactic magnetic reversal and current sheet could trigger it across the entire star. Do I know if this is more likely or my original guess? No. Does it matter or do we care? No. Same finish line. Folks, tomorrow evening we'll have a major catastrophism update. The science revolution marches on along with the cyclical disaster in our solar system. Tomorrow evening, don't miss it and get caught up with the disaster playlist below the video because the observers are marching on as well. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.